Welcome to lecture 13. In today's lecture, we will apply activity coefficients for ionic solutions to acid-base equilibria. This lecture will be presented in two parts. In the first part, we will review some acid-base equilibria concepts and then include ion effects which are governed by the average activity coefficient. In the second part, we will continue applying average activity coefficients in the context of buffer systems. Consider the following generic acid equilibrium reaction, being that HA in aqueous solution is plus H2O liquid is in equilibrium with A minus aqueous plus H3O plus aqueous. If we were to write an equilibrium expression based on this chemical reaction, we would write that the equilibrium constant Ka is equal to the activity of A minus times the activity of H3O plus divided by the activity of HA, which would be equal to gamma plus minus times the molality of A minus over the standard molality times gamma plus minus times the molality of H3O plus divided by the standard molality, all divided by the molality of HA divided by the standard molality. The percent ionization of the acid could be calculated by the molality of H3O plus at equilibrium divided by the molality of HA of the original point times 100%. And then finally, after the activity of H3O plus at equilibrium was determined, the predicted pH of the solution would be found by taking the negative log of the activity of H3O plus. Let's take these concepts and then let's now do a refresher on how we would calculate the pH and percent ionization of an acid with an acid equilibrium constant of 1 times 10 to the minus 3. Now in this case what we're going to do is we're going to have 0.1 mole of some generic acid HA mixed in the 1 kilogram of water, meaning that we're going to have 0.1 mole of this, and that in this case we're going to assume ideal conditions to start off with, where we're going to say our gamma plus minus is going to be equal to 1. Things first is that we'll write down our balanced chemical reactions. We have HA plus H2O, which is a liquid, DHA is aqueous, and that's in equilibrium with our conjugate base A minus aqueous plus H3O plus, also aqueous. And then if we write our ice table, IACE, we would say, well, our starting acid concentration, we already said, is 0.1 mole. We have nothing in terms of the conjugate base and nothing in terms of the H3O+. Plus. Because the H2O is a liquid, it won't count in our equilibrium expression because its activity will always be equal to 1. The change in this case for our acid, we're going to subtract x. Because it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio, we're going to add x to both of these, which leaves me with 0.1 minus x at equilibrium. For my conjugate base, it's going to be x. And for my H3O+, plus, it's also going to be x. This means that I'm going to write my equilibrium expression to be equal to Ka as being equal to the activities of the products. So that's uh, the activity of A- minus times the activity of H3O+, plus divided by the activity of the acid, HA. And so if I start to substitute in numbers, I'm going to have 1 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's equal to gamma plus minus times x, gamma plus minus times x, and that's going to be divided by 0 0.1 minus x. So in the lecture where I did ions in solution, I ended up solving this expression using the quadratic formula. In this case, what I'm going to assume is that x is going to be very, very small. So meaning it's going to be much, much less than 0 0.1. Um, and so what this does is this means that this term that's on the bottom, this 0.1 minus x, is just going to be equal to 0 0.1 because the subtraction is going to make a very little difference in terms of the 0.1 concentration. And then what we'll do is we'll then do a successive approximation to make sure that this value or this assumption is actually true. However, for this case, I'm going to show you how to solve it in this manner. The other thing that I'm going to do right away is I'm just going to cross off my average activity coefficients because we said that we're going to assume that it's going to be equal to 1, that we're operating under ideal conditions. And so in this case, I can simplify then this expression to be 1 times 10 to the minus 3 on the left-hand side times 0 0.1, and that's going to be equal to x squared. So if I take the square root of both of these sides, then what I get for my x is going to be equal to 0 0.01. We can now go back and we can actually gauge the validity of our approximation where we assumed that x was going to be much, much smaller than 0 0.1. And what we can do is just do a quick ratio where we would say 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.1, where this is equal to whatever x is divided by the original um, acid. And we can see that what we have is that this value is about 10%, if I multiply this by 100% right here. 
And generally what we would say is that if this value that we get, if this x over the original acid is less than about 5%, then we can just assume that our small value approximation is valid. In this case though, it isn't less than 5%, it's, it's about 10%, and so what that means is that we have to do a successive approximation. But all that means then is that we just take this, this expression that we just wrote a second ago, this equilibrium expression, which I've now denoted with a 1, and we're just going to do it, or we're going to keep doing it, until we get the same number over and over again for x. And so in practice what that means is that I'm going to just write again 1 times 10 to the minus 3, that's going to be equal to x squared. And on the bottom here, I'm going to have my 0.1 minus 0.01. So I'm now actually explicitly writing in what is the x that I had before, so I can actually get a more accurate value for my denominator. That means what I'm going to have is 1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 0.09, and that's equal to x squared. And so if I take the square root of both sides, what I'm going to get is an x being equal to 0.0095. And so we can see that we now have a slightly different number, which is fine, because again, we're still doing successive approximations, and we're going to keep doing this until we get the exact same number over again. 1 times 10 to the minus 3 is equal to x squared, divided by 0 0.1 minus 0 0.0095. I'm going to get then 1 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's going to be multiplied by 0 0.0905, and that's going to be equal to x squared, I take the square root of both sides, I get an x that's equal to 0 0.0095. And so now, because I've gotten the same number twice in a row, then that means then I'm going to settle on this value and say that my x is equal to 0 0.0095. Now if I'd done this using the quadratic equation, then I would have solved the quadratic and I would have gotten this exact same number. So it doesn't matter which method you choose to use, it's just that if you end up doing successive approximations, you might end up doing multiple steps with this, whereas the quadratic solver might just take you to the answer immediately. Generally, though, what we could say is that if the equilibrium constant is much, much, much less than the initial concentration of whatever it is that's doing the hydrolysis, in this case this is the acid, then we can use then the um, small x approximation and be fairly confident that um, it's going to be valid in the first attempt. It's just in this case because our equilibrium constant Ka was on the same order of magnitude or at least very close to um, our initial concentration of acid, it meant that a lot of the acid then would dissociate, which means that the x is going to be comparable to the initial concentration. But if Ka was some number like 1 times 10 to the minus 7, and, then we would have had something that was much, much less than 0 0.1. And then we probably would have even only had to do one iteration of the successive approximation, because we would have been far less than 5%, which is this threshold that we can typically use to say that um, a single approximation would be valid. Moving forward now, let's finish solving the problem where the problem asks us to find the pH and the percent hydrolysis. So in this case, the pH is equal to the negative log of the activity of H3O plus. And so when I substitute in the activity, what I'm going to have is the average activity coefficient times the molality at equilibrium of the H3O plus divided by the standard molality, which is equal to 1. In this case, then I can then substitute in for these numbers. We said we're operating in ideal conditions, so I'm letting my gamma plus minus equal to 1. The molality was 0 0.0095 divided by 1. And so this gives us a pH of 2.022. And that if I were to calculate the percent ionization, then that's the molality at equilibrium times, or sorry, divided by the original molality of what was in solution. In this case, it was the acid. I'm going to multiply that by 100%. And so when I substitute in the numbers, I get 0 0.0095 divided by 0 0.1 times 100%. And so what we're left with is 9.5%.